If you've read or seen many documents, odds are you would have seen some files with translucent or faded text or possibly images behind the main content. These faded text or images are known as watermarks. Watermarks are a great way to inform the reader that the document contains highly sensitive or confidential information and that they should take great care in using it. Watermarks can also inform the reader as to whether a document is an original or a copy or that it is an invoice, an estimate, a draft, etc. This is important especially in professional or business settings where there is a need to organize documents based on certain categories. Let's see how to build a text-based watermark using the built-in watermark features as well as how to create our own custom watermark based on either text or images. We'll also see how to create a custom watermark that we can add to the watermark library. This way we can retrieve our own custom watermark with just a single click. We'll begin with just the standard built-in watermark features. To make our watermark easier to see, I'm going to work with a blank page. The watermark feature is located on the design ribbon in the upper right hand corner in the page background section. By clicking watermark, we can get access to the built-in watermarks. Here we have three different categories, confidential, disclaimers, and urgent. Watermarks are typically displayed in one of two different directions, either diagonally or horizontally. The one you choose really just comes down to personal preference. Most people will use the diagonal version as it allows for more text given that you have more space. But if you're not happy with that particular version, you can try the horizontal version. They're very easy to switch between as you can just click watermark and then pick the one you want. If you don't want the watermark in your document any longer, you can choose remove watermark. When your document has its text, the watermark will appear behind the text in a washed out state. This is so it doesn't overwhelm the text and allows the text to remain readable. As you can see here, the word confidential is readable, but it doesn't dominate the viewer's attention. If you don't like any of the built-in choices for watermarks, we can go down to custom watermark. From here, we can type in any text we like. So from the drop-down, we have the built-ins, but I could put something like for internal use only. When I hit apply, you can see the watermark in the background. Now for the remainder of this video, I want you to be able to see the watermark more prominently. And in the real world, you might want to do this if what you're using is too faded out. So there is a semi-transparent setting that you can check or uncheck and allow the watermark to take a more dominant visual state. You can also change the color of the watermark. So even in a semi-transparent state or even with the semi-transparent state removed, it still might not have the dominant visual position that you're looking for. So we could change the color. Now for the rest of this video, I'm not going to use the semi-transparent feature because I want you to see the watermark more easily. But in the real world, you would likely go with semi-transparent. And if you don't like any of these colors, you could always go to more colors and pick from any of the colors in the color library. You can change the font. You can customize the size. Now keep in mind, the longer the text, the smaller the font size you're going to need. So if I was using something like draft, I could probably go with a larger font size. Auto will allow the text to be basically as large as it can be without exceeding the bounds of the paper. But if that was too dominant, you could go with a smaller font size. Most people just leave it on auto. From here, you can also alter whether the text is displayed horizontally or diagonally. You can also remove a watermark from this dialog box by choosing no watermark. You could also use images as your watermark. If we go to watermark, custom watermark, and then we'll choose picture. From here we can browse out and you can select a picture from your local computer, your OneDrive account, or you could even do an internet search using the Bing image search feature. So if I were to browse out for our company logo, I could add that. I'll hit apply. Here you can see it in its auto-sized washed out state. I could remove the washout feature and then I could decide exactly what I want the zoom factor to be. Choosing something like 250%, the image is far too large for the paper. Even at 50%, it's already reaching the edges. So you can type in any percentage you like, like 10%. You might need to play around with this feature to get just the perfect size for your document. If I wanted to have this watermark available just by going to the watermarks button, you can use the quick parts feature in Word to add this as a custom watermark. The way to do this is to start with a blank document. Go up to design, watermark, and create a custom watermark. This can either be text or picture based. I'll use the picture version. Now that I have the watermark, I need to highlight the watermark and then add it to the gallery. To do this, I need to be in header footer mode. One way to get into header footer mode is to go to the insert tab, then go to header and choose edit header. Once in header footer mode, we can do a control A on the keyboard and this will select all of the information in the header and the footer. Since there is no information in the header footer, the only thing we end up selecting is the watermark. With the watermark selected, we'll go to design, watermark, and at the very bottom, save selection to watermark gallery. This will open the create building blocks dialog box. We'll give this watermark entry a name like BCTI watermark. 
You can choose what category you want to place the watermark. These were the original categories in the tool, disclaimers, general, urgent, or you could create your own category. And we'll call this one BCTI watermarks. You can add a comment if you like, and then hit OK. I'm going to close the file without saving. If I were to start a brand new file, I can now go up to Design, Watermarks, and here at the top is the category BCTI Watermarks. I can now, with a click, add that logo. I could also go to Existing Documents and go to Watermark and click and add that watermark. If you need to edit the watermark for spelling, size, color, content, we can go to Watermark, Custom Watermark, and then change the options. If you need to manage the watermark entry from within the gallery, maybe you don't need this in your dropdown any longer, you can right click and go to Edit Properties. From here, you could change the category at which the watermark is stored, update the description, change the name, and if you needed to remove this watermark, you could right click, go to Organize and Delete. This will open the Building Block Organizer, and from here, you can either edit the properties as we did before, or you could delete the entry. If you have added or edited or deleted a watermark from the built-in gallery, be aware that when you close Word and then you save or don't save your document, Word will also let you know that the building blocks gallery has been modified. If you do not choose save, your custom watermarks will not be saved or the modifications you've made will not be saved. Now this can also be a safety net because if you accidentally delete a watermark or changed one incorrectly, you could choose don't save, restart Word, and you're right back where you started but most of the time you'll probably want to save your changes. Thanks for watching. Thanks and for watching. Remember, and if you have a suggestion for another learning video, stops. put it down in the comments and I'll be happy to do my best to put one together. Remember, at BCTI, the learning never stops.